Brandon Belt has spoken out for the first time since signing with the Toronto Blue Jays. He had a lot of suitors, but felt that the Jays valued him the most in free agency. Toronto has also acquired Zach Thompson from the Pittsburgh Pirates in hopes that he will add more pitching depth to their 40-man roster. We'll have that and much more in this episode of Jays Digest. What's up, Jays fans? I'm your host, Peter Briones, alongside host Nick Goss. The Jays have been making moves, and uh, I don't think they're done anytime soon, but we want to thank you all for the support. It's been unreal. Before we get into anything, uh, we want to thank you for your continued support in our live streams, and the new year could not have started any better. Yeah, it's been great. We're on the road to 6K subscribers, and uh, if you enjoy the daily content, just a quick reminder, hit the subscribe button. It means a lot, but uh, yeah, let's get right into the first topic of the video, which is Brandon Belt speaks out on joining the Blue Jays. He had a lot to say today um, during his, I guess, his interview and intro to the team, and he had to speak a lot on the um, his potential playing time that he'll be getting, so let's just get right into the first screenshot, which is Brandon Belt says that his free agency came down to three or four teams, but he felt like Toronto valued and excited him most. With his knee healthy, Belt is expecting a really good amount of playing time, mainly at DH with some first base behind vladdy and i have a few more screenshots i'll get another one here he says that the cartilage issue in his knee caused swelling last year impacting his game to the point that he underwent surgery in september now he's feeling amazing and he said i can honestly say it's the best i felt in two to three years i know i'm gonna go out there and be who i am and if you're a jays fan that is uh super exciting so what are your thoughts on uh on that and that's just really exciting i guess the signing in general if you want to touch on it again but what he has to say here is great Yeah, that's great news, but of course he's going to say that. I mean, the guy's a competitor, and, uh, you know, he's coming to a new team, so he wants to impress. But uh, he didn't look like himself last year in San Francisco, and in 2021, he kind of, he looked rejuvenated, you know? He looked like uh, he had more power than ever. His swing was pretty, you know, the the guy was taking walks. Uh, He wasn't striking out too, too much, so he looked real good in 2021. If he can get back to even 70 percent of that form wow the jays uh the jays are in business right there yeah and that's what uh, i saw a quote tweet to that last tweet from ben saying how good he's going to be feeling yeah like it said the exact same thing as you if brendan bell can perform in 2020 and 2021 then not only is the signing a bargain that makes us just even more of a powerhouse than we already are. I have another screenshot for you guys here. Brandon Belt says, the Blue Jays, this is about his playing time, told him he'll mostly be playing DH with a bit of first base, and the expectation is a really good amount of playing time. The injured knee is pain-free for the first time in years, which, again, is another great sign. Feels like he can hit 2020, 2021 levels, uses front and side leg in his swing. So clearly, the swing was impacting him. What are your thoughts on the playing time, uh, portion of this tweet and the what he's because he basically said throughout the whole uh interview that he's expecting a very good amount of playing time and uh, covering vladdy at first but mainly dhing yeah so he's mainly going to dh and i think that's the best way to go he's, he's got no more speed anymore he never had much to begin with but he is getting older and knee surgery will do that to you so uh he's he's 34 might be 35 by the time opening day rolls around so no more outfield for him uh not too much uh not too much running in late game scenarios either for Brandon Belt, uh, but that's why the Jays have built such a deep ball club. You know they can they can afford to to send Brandon Belt out there to pinch hit and then pinch run for him right away. You know so this team this this just collective talent that they have right now is deep and that's what you need to make a, a postseason run in October. So I'm I'm very excited to see what Belt can do. Um, not maybe maybe not exactly what the Blue Jays needed in another first base DH that might create a logjam for some other players, but it never hurts to have a guy who hits for power from the left side in a in a right-handed heavy lineup. Yeah, and he kind of brings some more uh, assurance to the team rather than going with a Nathan Luke yeah. or someone like that who hasn't played. And it kind of goes to your point that even making for the past few months, they're they're in it to win it now, and they uh, they don't want to wait around for these prospects or even take the risk of a prospect like Nathan Luke's him not turning out, and then you're stuck with whoever. Plus, like you said, God forbid Vladdy gets injured, he uh, belt can go to first base very easily and do a serviceable job there, unlike mm-hmm. uh, you know some other options. But a couple last screenshots regarding this, and then we'll move on. And he said the difference in his knee makes him very happy. I'll flat out say I feel like I'm going to be who I was in 2021. If it doesn't end up like that, it's not because of something physical. It's because I didn't have the year I should have had. Now, that quote right there is very good. It's him taking accountability, putting the injury to the side for this year. So there's no excuses about his injury. And this is the final thing, which is a very interesting thing. He basically talked about the leadership that he had 
with um, the leadership he's going to have in the Blue Jays. He talked about his time with the Giants, you know, Tim Hudson, Jake Peavy, all those veterans. And basically the Jays already have some great veterans. It's not like I'm coming in to change anything. He's stepping in and helping out what he can. Basically he's talked about that. And that's another side of it that we've talked about a lot is his veteran leadership. He's, he's a World Series winner twice. He played around people like, you know, Jake Peavy and all those people who have won before. And I don't know, it's, uh, I'm excited. It's just another clubhouse edition that mm -hmm. we, uh, we made and it's looking really, really good. Yeah, he was the captain in his last couple of years in uh, in San Francisco when Buster Posey retired. Madison Bumgarner was no longer there, so so he kind of took uh, took the reins and became the de facto leader of that team. And I expect him to do more of the same here. He's going to play a lot, and just to speak to the depth of this team, I think twelve of the thirteen position players are filled out. I think we could agree on that. Yep. And another thing I think we could agree on, Nick, is that Kevin Biggio is probably the worst player on the team right now which is not a bad thing because he would probably start on 15 to 20 other major league teams in some sort of capacity so it just speaks to how deep that this blue jays team is and and that they are built a lot better right now than they were once they ended the season for a, for a playoff run yeah he's definitely the odd man out we spoke about that in the live stream we'll probably have some videos covering that in the future once the free agency dies down a little bit just touching on the new and uh the new teams, the new additions we've made, but let us know in the comments what your thoughts are on that, uh, I guess the move in his comments, and we'll move on to the second topic, which is the Blue Jays make a sneaky trade, and I'll pop it up, I'm sure you guys have heard about it, it's uh, it's an interesting one, and the more I think about it, the more I kind of like it, and it's kind of the same way with Twitter, so I'll pop up the screenshot right, uh, right now, we have acquired, and this is from the Pittsburgh, so we traded Chavez Young um, in exchange for Zach Thompson, and we in turn had to DFA Junior Fernandez, so Peter, what are your initial thoughts on the trade? I have, I have one other screenshot. Um, but at the you know Chavez Young, obviously we're not gonna have you. We weren't gonna use him anytime soon. But he is a very solid minor leaguer. But we get Zach Thompson, who has a lot of potential, was very very good in 2021. Obviously he had a poor year last year. But what are your thoughts on that? I think Chavez Young has a lot more potential than Zach Thompson does. I mean he's he's uh, he's got the best arm of any outfielder in the Blue Jays system when he was here. His bat never quite caught up, but he's got speed and, and he plays a very, very good center field. So maybe it could be a loss down the road just because the Jays don't have many outfield prospects in their pipeline. But Zach Thompson, I, I don't know how high I am on him. He's um he's just another depth piece, but you can never have too much starting pitching. So God forbid uh, Yusei Kikuchi goes down or, or Jose Barrios goes down or, or anyone in your starting rotation goes down. Zach Thompson is probably the first one to slot to slot in there. Maybe Mitch White gets a chance as well. Uh, who else? Somebody, Thomas Hatch is another guy, but but you don't want to have to rely on Thomas Hatch. So so I think this is why they went out and got a guy like Zach Thompson to maybe fill that uh, that role and just add more depth to the not necessarily the twenty five man roster, but the the 40 man roster. Yeah. And maybe they see something in uh, Thompson because he's obviously done good in the past and obviously he switched teams. Uh, last year went to the uh, Pirates and hasn't really been the same since. And uh, he had one good year though. And I kind of agree with you. Travis Young was probably our best defending uh, center fielder in the, uh, in the minor leagues. And now, but we've replaced, we replaced him with the pitcher because we're trying to win now. That's what we've talked about all along. This is Ben Nicholson Smith's uh, thoughts on it. So obviously, we acquired Zach Thompson for Chavez Young. We had a DFA Junior Fernandez, who also, you know, was throwing gas. So he's 29, started 22 games for the Pirates last year, posting a 5.18 ERA in 121 innings, was DFA'd. Stuff wise, leads with the cutter, a non velocity fastball. It's pretty low, throws a change in curve, but he has options, depth for the Jays, like you said, and he's probably not going to be much more than that unless we're able to maybe tweak his, you know, we've done it with Robbie Ray. Obviously, it's not the same. He doesn't have the stuff that Robbie Ray has, but we've done it in the past, and maybe they see something with him. And if so, I don't mind the trade either way. You can't really uh, can't really complain too much, especially because he's probably going to be better than Thomas Hatch would have been going up. Yeah, that. Well, I mean, that's not hard to do. Uh, no disrespect to Thomas Hatch, but Zach Thompson, I mean, he doesn't throw hard. He, he gives up a lot of walks, gives up a lot of home runs. There's not... If you look at his peripherals, and, and I saw a tweet by Josh Goldberg, uh, who is a notable Jays fan. He's got a podcast as well, so shout out to him. Love the work that he does. But uh, he basically said, if you look at uh, Zach Thompson's 2022 numbers long enough, your eyes are going to bleed. And uh, I tend to agree with that. They're, they're not pretty. The peripherals are not good. He's got a high walk rate, low strikeout rate, um, high average exit velo given up. So... I don't know what the Jays see in him, but they know a lot more than we do, and there's a reason why 
they're in those positions and we're on here critiquing them for making these moves day in, day out. So uh, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be interesting to see if they can develop him into anything. He is a bit of an older guy, so maybe he'll hone it in and uh, and turn into something valuable. Yeah, I have a bit more faith in him. His, his peripherals in 2021 weren't that bad, but last year they were you know horrible. So, but again, he doesn't have any crazy stuff. So let us know in the comments your thoughts are on that. And let's move on to the final topic with really quick one. Free agency update. This dropped very recently, right before recording. Nelson Cruz has signed with the San Diego Padres. I know his name came up with the Blue Jays a little bit. We weren't really linked to him, but I know people were saying like, he obviously mashes lefties. He's obviously, but he's old now in a DH getting Brandon Belt. Kind of took us out of that DH spot. Signed with the Padres. Do you have any thoughts on this before we wrap up? Just wanted to throw that in there in case any of you uh, viewers missed it. But uh, I don't know. Another, I guess, left-handed hitting target off the board. Padres are just building something insane over there. They're they're like collecting infinity stones, like uh, like Marvel, uh, like uh, Thanos, you know. So they're that team is just super stacked. That lineup is going to be really dangerous come October, and uh, I'm excited to see what they can do. I I don't think he's the same Nelson Cruz that we saw just uh, a couple years ago, but he's uh, the guy can still hit. He's a pro. Yeah, I was going to say the same thing. He can still hit, and he's a veteran leader, and that's uh, you know it's very good for a team looking to contend. Kind of like similar to Brandon Belt in the leadership role, except obviously Brandon Belt has a bit more left in the tank, at least uh, from an overall perspective. But that'll wrap the video up. Thank you guys so much for the support. We'll be going live uh, again sometime this, uh, this week or weekend, so expect uh, we're excited to see you guys there if you tune in, and we'll see you guys tomorrow. Thanks.